Oh! I didn't see you there. I was busy uh, polishing my degree and sniffing my own farts. <clears throat> Wonderful. So just a normal Thursday night. But I'm glad you're here because I wanted to speak with you about something important. Something we don't often talk about. Imagine it. You're standing there minding your own business when BAM! A pair of hot steaming cabals smacks you right in the face flying in from Traveler Knows Where. For some of us, it even happens in the video game Destiny 2. But have you ever stopped to ask yourself, how fast are these so-called drop pods flying in at? How hard do they hit the ground? And why the fuck do they always seem to hit me? Well, you're in luck. Because today, my very charismatic and handsome friend, Meryl Morphic, is going to answer all those questions in this fourth episode of Destiny Physics. Enjoy. Thank you for the kind words and really obscure callback, Professor David. He's right, though. I set out with this goal a couple of weeks ago to find the yeet energy of the Cabal drop pods. But there were a few stumbling blocks that made this seemingly simple task a tad more complicated to do. But in the end, I was successful, and today I'm going to show you exactly how I did it. There are a couple assumptions and simplifications I'm going to be making during these calculations, and I'll go through them as they come up. First of all, we are going to assume that the drop pods are falling at terminal velocity. So what is that exactly, and is it a good assumption to make? Well, let's say you're skydiving. When you first jump out of the plane, the main force acting on you is gravity. However, as you pick up speed, a second force, opposing gravity, becomes more and more prominent. Drag, or air resistance. The strength of the drag force is dependent on your speed. So the faster you get, the stronger the drag is. Until finally, gravity and drag cancel each other out, meaning you stop accelerating. This doesn't mean you stop moving though, only that you continue falling at the same velocity. Any object that falls long enough in atmosphere will hit this terminal velocity, and so it's a decent assumption to make in our case since the drop pods come from so high up that we can't really see their source. We are also only going to be considering the drop pods that fall completely vertically for simplicity. In this case, the drop pods that fall in the trost land in the EDZ, and because of that we only have to consider one dimension. This is great because it means we really only need to deal with two equations. First, we have the yeet energy equation from the first video, which is energy is equal to one half times the mass times the velocity squared. We can measure the velocity in the game, but what is the mass? Well, we can obtain the mass with our second equation, which is the sum of the forces acting on the drop pod. This sum is equal to the drag force pointed upwards minus the force of gravity pointed down. And all of that is equal to zero since they cancel each other out at this terminal velocity. This means that we can just subtract one of the terms to the other side and do a little algebra to solve for mass. Now, you may be staring at this equation thinking to yourself, what the hell are all those letters? Is that a P? Well, fear not. Everything except for V is a constant here, most of which we can just look up. G is just the acceleration due to gravity, which is a constant 9.81 meters per second squared. A is the projected cross section of the falling object. We'll get into this in a second. Rho, the one that looks like P, is the density of the fluid, which is air in our case, and is equal to 1.225 kilograms per meter cubed. And finally, C is the drag coefficient. So let's talk about A and C first, as they are related. See, different types of objects interact with flowing air differently. If you've ever stuck your hand out a moving car, you know this intuitively. When your hand is sideways, it seems to cut through the wind with little resistance. But when your palm faces the wind, it gets pushed back much harder. 
This is because the palm forward position has a higher drag coefficient, or C, and we know the drag coefficient for many types of objects. But what about the Cabal drop pod? Well, it's roughly spherical, but it has flat sides, something like a dodecahedron or something of that sort. But after some study, I've just decided to make my second assumption slash simplification. We're going to assume that it has a drag coefficient roughly equal to a sphere. You can see on this table that a sphere has a C equal to 0.47, while a diagonal cube is closer to 0.8. The true number of the Cabal drop pod is somewhere in between those, but it's much more sphere-like, so it's probably closer to that sphere number. And so I think this is a pretty fair assumption to make. All this really means, though, is that our final mass will be a more conservative estimate, as a higher drag coefficient in our equation for mass would mean a larger mass. Next, we have A, which directly relates to our choice of shape. So since we chose a sphere, A is going to be related to a sphere. This is the projected area, and it can be most easily explained as like the hand turkeys that you drew in elementary school. No, really. Imagine taking the sphere, putting it on a sheet of paper, and using a pencil to draw around the whitest part of it. You'd end up with a circle with the same radius as the sphere. That circle is the projected area. So to get this, we just need to find the radius of the drop pod. We can do that and find a velocity all using in-game footage. So this is where I ran into the first issue. These drop pods fall fast, like really, really fast. I'm recording at 60 frames per second, and in the first few tests that I ran, I only picked up a single frame before the pod hit the ground. So I had to back way up and try again. Even still though, I was only getting five to six frames and then I ran into a new problem. It seemed like the pods weren't always falling at the same speed. However, I don't think that's what it really was. I could be wrong here, but if you look at the distance each one falls per frame, it's not always constant, but it's also not increasing or decreasing like you would expect if it were accelerating. I think the issue is with frame timing, but the moral of the story is that I had to take a bunch of measurements and take a normal distribution to find the average velocity. What does that all mean? Well, you've all heard of a bell curve, basically that. I was looking for the most average student on that bell curve. So as you can see, I measured distance similarly to how I have done in previous videos. I found a reference, a cabal soldier coming right out of the pod, which I know from the wiki is 8 foot 1 inches tall or 2.46 meters. I then used the footage to find the height in pixels, which was about 30 for this test, and then found the conversion factor of pixels per meter. And yes, I know that many of you were telling me to use Darcy to measure distance, but there really wasn't a good way to do it this time. You can see that I'm only measuring the final two frames of the fall. I'm not going to get into why here, because this video is already long enough, but rest assured that there is a good reason. However, I will be posting a follow-up for my patrons explaining the reasoning behind this, as well as the frame timing thing, and some other problems I had to overcome. So if you haven't already joined, please consider doing so. There's plenty of other benefits to becoming a member too. So anyways, two frames at 60 frames per second is equal to 0.0334 seconds. And the pods start anywhere between 15 and 24 meters above the ground, resulting in velocities between 470 and 816 meters per second, which is a big discrepancy. Luckily, we have our friend, the normal distribution, which tells us the mean velocity is about 623 meters per second, and that sort of agrees with the bulk of the measurements. 470 and 816 were pretty large outliers. So 623 meters per second is equal to about 1,393 miles per hour, which is, in case you didn't know, really freaking fast. That's Mach 4, well faster than Maverick or Goose ever went. It's a Top Gun reference. Also, we can measure the drop pod radius, which is about 2.86 meters, which means the projected area is 25.86 meters squared. Remember, the area of the circle is pi r squared. And that's it. We have all the information we need to do the calculations. 
If we plug all of these into the second equation, we get a mass of 294,536 kilograms. That is chunky. That's basically one and a half blue whales, or just over half the mass of the ISS. Then again, the pods are pretty huge, with a diameter of nearly 20 feet of solid metal, plus whatever cabal weights inside. It's definitely plausible, and remember, since we used a sphere as our shape, this is actually underestimating the mass. And now, since we have the mass and the velocity, we can plug those in to find the yeet energy of a falling cabal drop pod, and we get the result of 57 billion joules. I feel like a broken record here, but holy crap, that is a lot. I, I guess it makes sense though, a blue whale and its kid flying in at Mach 4 isn't going to tickle you. Still though, at the equivalent of 13 tons of TNT, that's more energy than a MOAB, or mother of all bombs, the second largest non-nuclear warhead. Here's what that thing looks like. Hey Bungie, maybe you understated the impact effect of these things. To be more realistic, you should make them kill us from like 100 feet away. I'm sure that won't piss anybody off. So the moral of the story is, the Cabal must have some serious impact absorbers inside their pods. Otherwise, the only thing coming out would be a puddle of goo. That's basically it. Every time you fight the Cabal, you basically have tons of blue whales falling down at you at Mach 4, and you kill them. They're endangered, you monsters. As I said, there will be a follow-up video to come on my Patreon going over some of the finer details of this. Uh, speaking of which, thank you very much to Dog Reich for becoming my latest patron. You rock, dude. But forget what I said earlier, because if you join him and sign up for my Patreon, I'm gonna sneak into your house at night and steal all your grapefruits, and no one will ever be the wiser. Also, if you like this video, go ahead and give it a thumbs up. And if you dislike this video, go ahead and give it a thumbs up. Okay, bye.